a verse was quoted and I would like to read in context what it says and and discuss it. Um, the verse was Matthew 22 and the one that was quoted was verse 37. But we're going to start at verse verse 34. Um, starting at verse 34, it says, When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? So we're talking about the Mosaic law. Um, and Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The, they were trying to trick Jesus when they asked him this question. And when he answered, he gave them the only answer that made sense at that moment. And at that moment, the answer that made sense was, if you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength, everything, and you love your neighbor as yourself, you automatically will not break any of the other commandments. Does that mean that we will perfectly fulfill the law? No. It is impossible for us to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, strength, whatever. It is impossible. And Jesus knew that, which is why he went to the cross to die for our sins. He knew that we couldn't love that much. He knew that there would be, a t there would be days where Heather was in a hurry and could not feed the homeless man that was asking for food. He knew that. And even though I loved that man that I drove past, or I loved that man who I said, I'm so sorry, I don't have anything I can give you right now. I loved him, but I had to keep on moving because that was where I was at that moment. Was it right? No, it was not. I should have stopped. I should have fed this person. If I were following the law, I would have stopped and fed this person, but I'm not following the law. Yes, we are to love and love fulfills all commandments, everything, but we are not held to that, which is why Jesus died for our sins. Um, I would like to see if anyone else would like to comment on that, please. I have a lot of legalists. They'll come in and start throwing that at me as if I'm telling people not to love God and not to love others. And here's the thing. They can... It, you you said it exactly right. He was saying that's the heart of the law here. If you do this, all you you'll if you love God, you won't worship idols. If you love your neighbor, you won't steal his stuff. You know, it's it's all that's what makes up the law, right? You explained it so perfectly, Heather. Uh, however, all they're doing when they bring that and go, yeah, but you got to love God. Jesus Himself said, you got to love God with all your heart, soul, mind. Okay, nobody does that perfectly. Like you said, nobody. And these people come in like they do. Like they do. And that is what I've been telling people. They're so deceived. There's no talking to these people. And if they've rejected the true gospel or eternal security, they're constantly coming in. Once saved, always saves the doctrine of devils. You got to love God. You got to love your neighbor as yourself. You got to... And, and they just turned the beautiful message of the gospel and what Jesus did uh, for us into legalism, into works again. And there's so many ways that they twist it all up. But until you have received God's love, you got nothing. Until you've received God's grace, you'll never be able to love God or your neighbor. When you're Christ-centered, Christ-focused, that's when you can. But in this fallen flesh, Paul himself said, I had not yet attained it. Neither were all where, was I already perfect. So uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because a lot of legalists will come in and yell that at me like I've never heard the verse before. Like, I don't know that's what Jesus said. The problem is they, they can't see. They don't fit that. 
they don't fulfill it. And God doesn't grade on a curve. You have God's righteousness by faith in Christ, or you have your own righteousness. There's no mixture of God's righteousness plus my own for salvation. And they can't seem to get that. So I'm glad you clarified what he meant by it and you worded it perfectly. I do have one more question for you, Renee. So since we are not under the law, does that mean we should not love God with all our heart or at least try to should not should not love God with all our heart, soul, mind? Or should or does that mean that we are no longer under that and we no longer have to be that way? Absolutely not. That's the way people word this is we got to be careful because I've seen people take what I say and just run with it. Like when I say, you know, we're not justified by the law. We, that's not, you know, we don't, we're not saved by keeping the law or keeping commandments. Uh, shall we sin so grace may abound? God forbid we died. Why are we going to feed the dead flesh? We're going to walk in the new man. Uh, that's in the blessings that come with that. So it, it's funny because people will say, well, we don't need to worry about law keeping. Well, in a sense, you don't because we're not law focused. You know, Paul said, I would not have known coveting if it hadn't been thou shalt not covet. That one slew me, it killed him. You know, I was alive once, but then I died. So focusing on the law, it's the strength of sin. But when you're walking with the power of the Holy Spirit, it's not this voice of um, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not, it's not like that. It's uh, That's not who you are anymore. You're the righteousness of God in Christ. You're a child of God. So you're walking in the identity that God says you have. Your permanent standing slowly becomes more and more your state. So your permanent position starts to become your performance. But uh, yeah, we can't even love God properly unless we've received his love for us. And most people have not. They're so John was perfect about this because he he said the disciple whom jesus loved he boasted in jesus's love for him peter boasted in his love for jesus and denied him three times but john when he boasted in the love jesus had for himself that he was the only one at the foot of the cross so uh, i really think it's about acknowledging god's love and grace for us first before we can even walk that way but it's a mindset it's uh, the legalistic mindset versus uh, walking with the Lord and in gratitude, peace, and joy. Could I say something, please? Please do. I, I have seen this my whole life. I've been a believer since I was a child. And it's always been puzzling to me because I knew as a child <laughs> who children are more innocent, I would say, right, than adults. I, I don't think anybody would argue with that because they don't, they haven't even experienced most of the stuff that adults are going to do. They don't even have the desire to do those things, especially if they're before puberty. And I knew I couldn't keep the law. And I'm puzzled how adults, especially when people are born again, they say they're born again, Get into this legalism when it's not the spirit of the Lord. When you have the Holy Spirit, you already know. You are living so far beyond law keeping. Because the conviction of the Holy Spirit is exactly what Jesus expressed when he said, if you even look on a woman to lust after her, you have committed adultery with her already in your heart. So when we look or con uh, consider even to consider to do evil the holy spirit is right there to warn us and convict us even before we do it the bible says the lord makes a way of escape so i, I i'm puzzled by this i i'm puzzled by christians who say they're believers that want to keep the law as as proof of their justification 
we're justified by faith in Christ alone. And I don't have to worry about keeping the law. He's written it on my heart. And if I don't know one of those 613 commandments in the old covenant, and I was about to transgress them, the Holy Spirit's going to check me. This is what's puzzling to me. And they act like when we say you don't have to keep the law, they don't understand what we're saying. We're talking about concerning being saved. No one who's a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ that has proper exegesis is going to tell a person not to, uh, uh, no, uh, tell a person to transgress the law. The devil is a liar. It's absolute asinine. And in fact, it's insulting. And I, I'm to tell you the truth, I'm really tired of it. People need to grow the heaven up because this is, this is like grade school simplicity. This is the simplicity of the gospel is that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He fulfilled the law. Our faith in him imputes that righteousness unto us. Now, as believers, we do not set out to transgress the law. We do not teach that you should transgress the law. We, it, and we would repudiate anybody who did such a thing. And, and that's all I have to say. About I'm it. sick of it too, Lisa. I have more videos on my channel on this. They have worded it so many ways. And I, I keep telling, I'm not telling you to break God's laws. I'm telling you not to trust in you not breaking them. I'm telling you not to trust in anything you do to save you. Once you're saved, the Holy Spirit's in you. He will tell you how to walk. You don't have to memorize laws. You don't have, matter of fact, we established a law. It's way up here. It's greater than the dead letter. We don't demand an eye for an eye. We forgive and love our enemies. It's greater than the law. But it, it, I, I'm so sick of the same accusation over and over again. And it's not new. Paul said, as we are slanderously reported, as some affirm that we say, let us do evil so good may come, whose damnation is just. It's just like Elisa said, it's a trick of the devil. He's a liar. It's trying to keep people from coming to full faith in Jesus Christ alone for their salvation. Because as of now, they do not believe the gospel. They can say they believe Jesus died for his sins, was buried and rose again. They do not because they don't know what it means. It means he promised eternal life. That life is in his son. That's the report. Isaiah said, who shall believe our report? Not many. And so there's very few professing Christians that actually believe the gospel. And that is what's so sad. It is very sad. Well, I'm uh, uh, equally aggravated as uh, Lisa and Ray about this because uh, uh, th this is a fellowship. Uh, a fellowship uh, is uh, among believers, and, and believers uh, are supposed to be beyond milk. <laughs> this is so, as Lisa said, it's so elementary. Are we going to have to go back to the milk in the congregation? Now, if I, I understand it, if someone on the outside is uh, you know coming in and doesn't understand the gospel, or uh, and and is it, we our rule is that if someone comes wants to argue against the gospel, then we we're supposed to uh, arrange a time to discuss it with them, uh, so that our program is not uh, you know kind of hijacked and whatever our plan is. Now we have to go discuss that. That's the protocol. What we're supposed to do, but if this is coming from the congregation then there's a real problem because, uh, you know, if, if you're in this congregation, if you understand the gospel, if you believe as we, as we uh, uh, have been teaching, then, then we should be beyond this because the, we're, we're discussing milk now. So uh, yeah, uh, anybody, if you don't understand this, we're, 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 we're saved apart from works. Works are not required to get saved or to keep our salvation or to prove our salvation. However, 
we're saved unto good works and everybody here agrees there is nobody that's refuting that we should not be doing works so if someone wants to challenge that and say oh you're you're leaving out works or, or what you're supposed to do works yeah what do you think we're doing this is a work we're doing right now we are coming together as as uh, the scriptures say don't neglect coming together and and uh we're having fellowship and we're discussing the word uh and, and uh this is all part of our work in in our ministry and in our efforts to grow and mature uh so yeah we we want to do works but uh well, let's not have anybody uh question our our uh, desire to to uh, do works we just don't want anybody imposing it as a uh, a test for salvation so can we leave it at that is there anybody here who, who doesn't agree with the, those those points if so then you know uh you you shouldn't be in the congregation you know you're an, you're a non-believer and we we need to talk to you and teach you the gospel if if, if you think that you have to uh, question whether uh, uh you know that the role uh, works have any role in the church they do but not not as a test for salvation so um yeah go ahead renee somebody asked you know well as believers what what, what are we supposed to do with the law or be the law we have the holy spirit in us paul talks about the gentiles that didn't know the law just by nature did what was under the law so he said uh, not the hearers of the law but the doers of the law should be justified uh hearers just because the jews heard the law and had a list of the law didn't make them any more righteous than the pagan gentiles because nobody is, obtains righteousness by the law they never have they never will We've always been saved by God's grace. The law was to stop every mouth and make them guilty before God. But sadly, the pr proud people still think they're keeping it. But God doesn't grade on a curve. So the Gentiles just did what was right. And I want to tell you, if you're trusting what Jesus did for you, and you understand that he gave you eternal life, you have the hope of the resurrection before you, which is a, a sure hope. The Holy Spirit's in you, and he will never guide you to transgress God's law. He will never lead you that way. Now, your flesh might be loud if you're a babe or you're not walking in right fellowship, but you'll always hear that still small voice telling you what is the loving thing to do. It boils down to love, loving God, loving others. And you will know. Nobody needs to tell you a law. You don't need a list of don't do this. You better do that. Stop doing this. You just walk by his guidance. He will never lead you wrong. That's why I don't understand all this stuff about the law, the law, the law. They, they didn't even know the law. And they just did what was right. The Holy Spirit will always lead you to do what is loving and godly. He will never encourage you to sin, to transgress God's law and, and blaspheme the name of the Lord. He will never do that. But I, I would think that's what concerns me. If people really did believe the gospel and understood our blessed assurance, wouldn't they know the Holy Spirit guides us? Wouldn't they know they don't have to worry about somebody going crazy and coming a Satanist and still being saved? That's, that's their big straw man. Wouldn't they know that the Spirit's in us and that if we decide to walk in our flesh and be carnal, that we will suffer consequences for it? God's not a mock to reap what you sow. It's just the way it works. So it's, it's very bizarre. It is uh, milk, and it's just crazy how much we have to defend it and how many people call themselves Christians actually set up ministries to deny the gospel to expose us gospel preachers to deny our blessed assurance to say the gospel is enough his blood wasn't enough it's amazing to me how many are out there 